All right, we're going to talk about commercial applications of AI. We're going to make this really quick, but we'll go through some definitions of AI, and we'll talk about what this can do in a practical way leading into the next panel, which is all commercial applications. No existential threats here, nothing about AI ethics, just about what are we going to actually do to make this useful. We're going to talk about what you may be experiencing in large organizations, which is brought about by a, a philosopher, economist of Baumol. Uh, he had this concept where as systems become increasingly complex, some have increasing productivity relative to others. The canonical example he gave is it takes as many violinists in 2023 to play Beethoven's Ninth Symphony as it did 100 years ago. So a ordinary a music for the common people kind of became an elitist good because we don't have increased productivity in violinists. That was the issue. What we're now experiencing that is in information technology itself, where we have a discrepancy of productivity expressed itself in different areas. And you know, in other areas of our economy, you see healthcare and education being laggards in experiencing productivity increases. Therefore, they are the drivers uh, of inflation. And you can see that this is not just coming for blue collar jobs, it's coming for even white collar jobs. It's coming for data science jobs, which you think are some of the safest jobs out there. Those can get automated away. You know, my company itself can automate away big parts of data engineering. And you can see here how, the, how other areas in the world have increased as areas of productivity. This is just a place to be watching uh, about where we see cost disease decreases in productivity relative to other areas of productivity. And the clue here, whenever you see increasing budgets but static results or static budgets but decreasing results, you know you have Bummel's cost disease. That's how it expresses itself uh, in your world. And you see, w the way we are continuing to expand our lifestyle is by increases in productivity. And fortunately, you see labor costs have more or less stayed in line with productivity increases over time. Again, the value that indiv each individual worker is contributing has stayed in line, and this is what has propelled our economy over the past generation. But now we're getting into a different world. We're getting into a world where, the, the, where, where we, are, we are needing to get away from large language models, as we were talking about on the last panel, just writing poems or creating uh, a, a, a synthetic digital image of, of ourselves to working in what we call zero trust industries or areas where there's high consequence context. You know, anybody want to raise their hand and say that they will trust large language models to design an airplane for them? Show of hands, show of hands. No one? No one? No? Yeah. That's, that's what we're going to places where we just can't trust having any degree of failure. And this is, these, these, are, these are interconnected systems. So we, can, we have to make sure that these don't permeate anywhere. Now, when, when we talk about artificial general intelligence, I don't know what people's definition here is, but generally we'll talk about artificial general intelligence being something that can expand beyond what it is narrowly trained on. Uh, the, the term it, uh, AI and AGI have morphed over the past generation, but this is where, where it has gone. It's going to express its, it's going to expand uh, over the next 10 years. And large language models, although they are uh, all the rage today, uh, let me say, this is my view, having been in AI for 30 years as a, as a researcher, policymaker, entrepreneur, investor, I'd say the hype is completely justified for the medium to long term, but a little overdone in the short term. LLMs are not magic. They are not the solution to running a power plant. They're not, they're not something you want to uh, uh, design and test uh, drugs. Uh, large language models are for learning. They're not for teaching. They're not for encoding truth, and they will never be for encoding truth is, is actually all the, is, is the issue. So we're going to go through the definition of AI, and we're going to make this really snappy. So people know large language models. That is a subset of neural networks, itself a subset of machine learning. Everybody's heard about this. This is itself a, a stochastic or probabilistic AI. That is a, su that is a, that is a sleeve. Uh, of AI. That is, that is not the totality of AI. There's a whole other world. People may be familiar with IBM's Watson. That was kind of an early stage issue of symbolic AI encoding truth. But, and that is, so you have symbolic 
and stochastic AI. I did a little alliteration there. It is also known as deterministic and probabilistic. If you remember from your high school uh, logic, there's deduction and induction. That's the way of thinking about this, stochastic, symbolic. And then the third area is social. So this is the triangle of truth. <laughs> this is how you want to be implementing AI in all of your organizations. This is what we're going to see in the, in the next 10 years. Somebody asked me what, what would happen in the next year. This is ultimately where it needs to go for every system you know of. This is how we're going to design rockets, how we're going to design airplanes, how we're going to design healthcare systems, how we're going to do law, uh, is it needs to be in this triangle, stochastic, symbolic, and social. You have to have a human in the middle. You may not need as many humans, but you have to have a human in the middle. And that is uh, what is going to ultimately get us to these AIs that are going to expand upon their narrow degree of training. And the problem is many people today, uh, many boards are demanding of their leadership to explore what AI could mean for them. They, they, are, they are putting task force in place, but I think they're going to be disappointed with the results uh, if they are only focused on large language models because they really have, in isolation, the ability to be a really good front end, a really good interface. It's a place to explore. You can do uh, uh, anomaly detection, but they are not the place to encode truth for your supply chain. You do not want to depend on this for risk management of a money center bank, right? They have their particular uh, applications. So the IT services is often thought of as something that is the epitome of productivity, right? We, we, we hire these, these nerds like myself that grew up in a basement in front of computers to, to uh, operate these large systems, but that itself is actually going to go away. Large consultancies make billions, even tens of billions of dollars on IT services, and much of that itself is going to be automated to address the cost disease. And this is, this is going to also happen in healthcare uh, over, the next, over the next 10 years because you can see how inefficient healthcare systems are globally. There's a lot of different moving parts in healthcare. Healthcare is really its own thing relative to other industries. I would say that, that a lot of industries are alike. Healthcare is not, but that is also seeing a degree of, of automation. And this, this generalized AI applied to IT is where, where you all are going to see operational advantage. That's where you're going to want to look about implementing AI is in, in IT. So that issue about speed often comes up about AI. Uh, we're, we're experiencing more speed. People say the world is moving more quickly. The way that it is expressed, the way that we experience speed is in abruptness. And this is a chart demonstrating abruptness, abruptness of change. That's why it feels so scary. It feels scary because this stuff, this change smacks ourselves in the head with the rate of adoption of these technologies. And the, the what am I going to say? And the issue with, these, with this scary abruptness is the large language models, I want you to re gonna read this carefully, I'll even talk you, through, talk you through it, is some of these systems, if we scale them too quickly, can lie to you. We know this confabulation, is kind of the technical term over hallucination, but large language models can, can lie to you. So there's a, new, there's a new technology inside the large language models where it can interpret, interpret uh, uh, images. And so you can feed in an image to ask GPT to lie to you, and then give it a prompt, what does the note say? and it will lie to you. <laughs> it's a picture of a penguin. How about that? So nobody raised their hand on uh, it smartly. Nobody raised their hand at the beginning of this talk saying that they're going to have a large language model design an airplane for them. Thank you. you. You passed the test on that. And this is a demonstration of why th that will always be the case. Large language models by, by themselves will lie. And as much as we try to then predict the future, even people like myself that have spent my, their careers in this have a really difficult time conceptualizing what the future of this is all going to look like because the magnitude of the compute is really, is really hard to get our head around. Uh, uh, the H100 is the chip made by NVIDIA. They're going to make uh, a million and a half of those again next year, which means that for, by next year, for every man, woman, and child on the entire planet, they will be able to have a 100 billion parameter model calculating for you individually about a billion transactions a second. It's just, it's unfathomable. So even as smart as I would like to think that I am, can't predict too far in the future. So what you can do about that is you can just be agile, you can be ready by encoding truth into, encoding truth into your AI systems and looking at that, 
um, uh, 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 Look at Leah, looking at that at neurosymbolic uh, AI is actually the term that the US Defense Department, DARPA, uses for that. So neurosymbolic uh, AI is, is the future of that. And with that, we got, we got our time. And we're going to morph into a panel uh, soon. So I invite you to stick around. And we're going to talk about the three commercial experts about what we find to be the consensus view of a commercial expressions uh, for AI uh, over the coming years. So thank you.